lecture and good afternoon. So today I would like to present about one point. One you need to talk about is selecting a method of data collection. You have to check Rina, please move to the next point. Next, please. Okay. Yeah, um, method of data collection, they have two points to consider whether you want to use the canary source or primary source. So the primary source, you need to consider um, many points. But in here, you need to consider three points. First one is observation. Second one is interviewing. Then the third one is questionnaire. So uh, primary source, it means um, you need to spend much money and it's more expensive than secondary source because it's secondary source, it's less expensive and you can search it from the other source, like as internet, textbook, other document, like they put in here, government publication, early research, census, personal record, client histories, service record. So uh, the secondary source is more easier than primary source. So primary source, you need to do everything by yourself. Yeah, teacher, Rina, please move to the point, the next point. Yeah, so the college thing that they are using primary source, you need to think of the choice of the method depend on the the first one is the purpose of the study. Second one is the resources available. And the third one is the skill of researcher. So the choice of a method depends on the three main points before you decide to, to choose um, the primary source. Yeah. So you need to know the purpose of the study. It the first one. If you don't know the purpose of the study, you cannot do it well. And the second one is resource available. You need to know as well whether you have enough resource for your research. And the third is I mean that the skill that of the researcher. So you need to know that you have enough skill or you have the time or you have the, the skills on that research are you skillful on that or not it means that you study in the in that um, sector so you need to research on that sector you cannot research in other field or other sector it means like that uh, this one yeah so Rina, please move to the and then we, in the primary, primary store, we have three. And the first one, uh, we talk about the observation. So observation in using the primary source, um, it means that observation is a purposeful, systematic, and selective way of watching and listening to an interaction or phenomena. Phenomenon, yeah. So, purposeful, it means that um, in Khmer, mean go dao, rigo go bam no, ba lo. It means that when we do it, we need to, to know to know the goal of that, of what we want to observe. And in what context, we have three points. The first one is learn about interaction in a group. The group interaction, we need to know. The second one, study the behavior or personality threat of an individual. The third one, 
study the dietary pattern of a population. The fourth one is ascertain the function performed by a worker. Yeah, teacher, please move. And we have two types of observation. The first one is participate, participation observation, and the, th the second one is non-participation observation. Participation observation, it means a researcher participate in the activity of the group being observed in the same manner as its member, with, a, with or without their knowing that they are being observed. So it means that in this point, we join with them. Um, it means in Khmer, Yung Cho the Khlong at Majak, Away Muin, the Major Kate Murk, just dying, Murk, come up here, we come up, be the line, just dying, clone, I know you, but I'm clone, which is Majak, like participation, observation. And non participation, observation, it means that. A researcher does not get involved in the activity of the group, but remain a post, sorry, a passive observer, watching and listening to its activity of the group and drawing, including from this. So it means in my to young at member, okay, non-participation observation. Chẳng lại nó pi khóc nè. Ti mối cái dương châu bà lắm luôn. Chẳng dương song đại cái lại nó còn song luôn cái này đại. Hay thì pi cái dương mưa kia bị dùng ngay. Mình này than non-participation observation. Chị đi chơi play mưa đến đây lại. And the problem with using observation they have have shown a fight what it observed does not respond, uh, represent normal uh, behavior or behavior by us mean uh, sometimes um, we observe but uh, we cannot get what we uh, supposed to happen like uh, by us it means that lum yeng yeng observe mà nóng cái khá này khá quát là cái nào thì cũng có lúc yên là thằng nào mà chứ có hoặc là cái nào thật có ảnh lâm cái đá thì chẳng thôi ơi ở đây là chân dự là thật phong là riêng của mình và nó chỉ bằng như hà như sinh ở observation tại Right interpretation from one observer to another and the last one is possibility of incomplete observation and or recording Yes, sometimes uh, we cannot observe it uh, completely because of some problem happening during that observation as well. So the four, the four main point here it means that we will fail during our observation sometime because uh, we will meet that that problem. Yeah. So the chapter move to the next slide. The situation in which observation can be met. So we have to natural and control. The yeah, natural it means that observing a group in its natural of uh, operation rather than intervening in its activity. It means that um, if you want to observe one market, so you need to go it, go to that market to observe it. You need to go to that place and then you observe. Yeah, it means naturally. And control, it means that um, introducing a stimulus to the group for it to react to and observing the reaction. Like in this picture as well, we have uh, the four kids inside here and one teacher. They put one uh, like a picture and then they want to know the, the kid reaction. 
from that picture or that toy. So, so it means that controls. We, we, we are the one who, who uh, introducing a stimulus to that group and we uh, try to observe it, reaction. Yeah. So the chaplain move. Yeah, about the recording our observation, we have two as well. We have narrative and scale. Uh, narrative means that uh, the observer records a description of the interaction in his or her own word. It means that um, you write down what you see and describe or describe what you see, and you write down on your your own word by using your own word. We can say in Khmer that um, during the Chermul ke Chermul hay during the Sevier year, chỉ là cái nào ca sang kết bao nhiêu mà dương trong the Sevier là cái nào than chỉ là biết ấy tam ca trong the Sevier bao nhiêu mà nó cái hà than là đẹp chứ. Cứ ở miền ca riêng ấy đã chỉ ấy chỉ ấy được lại scale đi. But scale mình đây thay dương mình li the better observation. Scale, it means the observer de develop a scale. Uh, for example, one, two, three, directional to rate various aspects of the interaction phenomenon. First one is no in deep information. The second one error of central tendency and the third one elevation effect. Like I put the the graph here, um, we have it a little bit small, too small. You can check inside book as well. Um, I would like to see. Oh. It's on page uh, 143. Yeah, the study of the nature of our interaction of in a group. So we have Aspect of interaction, we have participation, report, confidence, aggressiveness, withdrawalness, friendliness, abluffness. So we have from number five to uh, to zero, and from zero to five, and from from five to zero, it means from positive to neutral. And from neutral to negative, we have from zero to to five in that graph. Yeah. So it we call uh, it a kind of scale that we use in uh, recording of observation. Yeah. Teacher, please move to the next. And we have more as well. Categorical uh, recording. So it means that the observer uses category to record his or her observation. We have passive, slash active. We can call it to cat. And the next always, sometime, or never. And can call three cat. And the next it um, call it five cat. It means uh, strongly agree, agree, entertain, disagree, or strongly disagree. Yeah, for for the category call record. So we we divide it it into three points. Yeah. We can we have passive or active, always, sometime or never. And sometimes we have strongly agree. Yeah, I used to see that that uh, observation record as well from my my uh, my friend or my teacher. He gave us to do uh, when we are learning from him in the university. And recording on sorry, and recording on mechanical device. We using video tab to analyze. Yeah, so. Recording a mechanical device, so we use machine or we use tab to analyze this this point. 
like uh, I put in the picture here. And for my furniture, please move, uh, please move more this year. More this year, more. Yeah, we move to the interview. So interview, we have two points. And structure, or we, or we can call uh, in-depth. And the second one is structure. So, um, and structure, it means that an interview guide, a list of broad question is formulated. Follow up question are formulated spontaneously during an interview. Yep. And about structure, it means uh, an interview schedule, a written list of questions is brief, uh, formulated. Only questions in the list are used. So it means here. And structure, I would like to say in command. Um, we need to have like, and structure. We need to do on repeatedly the question mark. The event like that. How you saw it here? At Grong Tok, we need to saw the ray like that. How see you grow? Like that. But like structure, we need to have young. Saw time, time, some no the young man with job. We need to have some no the young that more than man the young saw the none. At saw Chen Pi, a way the young man Grong Tok. ตกนั่นเตคือสู่แต่ขนมลิขิตยืนบ้านตรงเตจังเกฮะฟรักเชอร์เราไปอันฟรักเชอร์คืออัดกรงตกเตสู่สไรให้แต่ขณะซีจุ
useful for collecting in-depth information. Information can be supplemented. Question can be explained. Has a wider application population. Yeah, it talk about the advantage and about disadvantage. Time consuming and expensive. Yeah. The quality of data depends on the quality of interaction. The quality of data depends on the quality of interviewer as well. The quality of data may vary when many interviewers are used. The researcher may introduce his or her bias. So this one is the disadvantage of using interview and advantages. So uh, for, for me, that's all teacher for my group, or for my point, sorry. <laughs> and let's move to teacher Rina for the next point that talk about the questionnaire. Thank you so much, teacher and everyone for your uh, listening. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, teacher Bachida. So let me continue from teacher Bachida. So my point will talking about on at more. So my point will be talking about the questionnaire. So I think everyone have known about this word. So a questionnaire is about um, a list, a list of uh, written question that the uh, respondent need to uh, need to uh, record by by themselves when we give them the answer to uh, the question to answer and uh, between the questionnaire and interview uh, we can uh, we can say that uh, the questionnaire uh, the respondent need to uh, record or need to answer by themselves but for interview um, the interviewer need to uh, record the answer by themselves so they just go to interview as as uh, the respondent the question and then they record by themselves for interview and for questionnaire so when we uh, ask them uh, or we, we give them the the list of the question so if you have something like sensitive or something that uh, make them uh, feel not good or afraid to answer, we need to uh, give like, we can say, uh, how to say, Uh, like uh, I forgot that word. <laughs> like a structure, like uh, something uh, to to make them feel comfortable to to answer, or we can say something that uh, follow them or, or let them not to answer or answer. It it depend on their uh, decision. And here is about uh, uh, the way of uh, administrator administering uh, a questionnaire. So we have three. We have uh, the mail questionnaire. So the mail questionnaires, as you know, uh, it's something about uh, the researcher. They they prepare a list of the question. And then they send it through mail to the respondent, to someone, or to uh, the the people that they want to to get the answer. 
but uh, they must uh, add some address or something that that uh, that make the respondent uh, know about uh, the the owner. So if they don't know about the the people who create the the mail questionnaire, so it it might hard for them to uh, to accept and answer the question. And another one is about the uh, collective questionnaire. So this one is also the best way for researcher to collect the information or uh yeah so uh this one is uh normally uh they they do it uh at school so it might be a, a group of a student in one class or two class or three class so it depends on the researcher so how how they set up to uh, to collect it to collect the information from the area that they want. So to do so, uh, it, it, we can see uh, like two or less uh, respondent that refuse to answer because uh, uh, they, they just go to uh, the classroom directly. or like uh they 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 already arranged uh like a meeting or something else with uh, the people that they want to do uh the questionnaire and another one is about um administration in a public place so this one we can say uh the researcher they do they do this uh with uh uh, in a public place uh, such as like a shopping, cent a shopping center, health center, hospital, school, or in pub. So uh, they just uh, go to ask them uh, by having a list of the questionnaire and then they, they, uh, they do it uh, one place to one place in order to collect the information. But uh, this one, uh, they need to uh, explain about the purpose of the the purpose of doing it uh, doing it uh, uh, clearly. Because if they don't uh, explain them clearly, it, they might refuse to uh, to give you the answer because uh, they 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 are not sure that uh, you you do this. Uh, in the right way or, or, or in the wrong way. So they are afraid to give you information. So this one, we need to give clear instruction and clear information about uh, the purpose of doing this questionnaire. And another one uh, is about um, choosing between an interview and a questionnaire. Uh, so we have interview uh, versus questionnaire. So in this one, we have three. We have uh, the nature of uh, investigation, uh, the geographical distribution of the study population, and the type of uh, study population. So um before we decide to choose um which one is the base so we need to see that like in the nature of the investigation if the question or or something that uh make the respondent feel sensitive or face threaten, uh threatening or uh threatening issue so uh we 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 should not use the interviews uh, way we, we better choose the, the questionnaire way to uh, to get the information because if we do the interview they might fear they might afraid of giving you information so they might they might stop 
in in the middle way when you do the interview but for doing the questionnaire when you give the instruction in the in the paper so when they read when they see it so they might give you the information uh, for for you because they are not speaking back they just write in the letter or in the paper and about the geographical distribution of the study population so <clears throat> in in this way um we we also use the questionnaire too because uh, uh it, it, it might be uh hard for the researcher to go through uh, some area that it, it, it might be like uh, cost them much more money or very expensive thing to go to uh, the area or maybe the area is far from here like the researcher is living in Swairian and they want to research in Mandogiri so if they need to go to Mandogiri all the time so it might be difficult for them to do to do this so they need to choose the the questionnaire in order to get information so it might be the way of like calling or mailing or a video call or using uh, media to do the questionnaire in order to get uh, the information or to collect the information from them and the last one is about type of study population so in this one we have two we have lit literate and illiterate so for the very young people for the old people and for someone who are uneducated uneducated maybe it hard for them to do the questionnaire because they cannot read or they cannot uh, see maybe for the old people maybe the eye are not good enough to to look at the paper so uh, we better use interview but for the people who are educated for the young or who can read uh, we can say we use the questionnaire to collect the information So let's move to the next. So here is the proof and con of the questionnaire. So the advantages of doing questionnaire, we can say it is less expensive. So uh, they, they sell time, uh, they, they sell financial, um, we can say, this one is convenient. Yeah, this one is convenient. They they don't spend much money. They just spend on only for printing paper or they just uh, sending through email or social media in order to get uh, information. And another one uh, offer a greater autonomy. So this one, uh, they just, uh, they, they, they don't need a uh, face-to-face uh, interaction between the respondent and the interview. So they just provide them uh, some situation uh, where a sensitive question are asked it, uh, that, that had to increase uh, the likelihood of obtaining the accurate information. And for the disadvantages, so this one is, um, we can say limited uh, publication and uh, population. And another one is about a low response rate. Yeah, this one, uh, maybe sometime it hard because some respondent, they might not uh, feel good in uh, to to answer the questionnaire because if if you done uh, if the respondent and the uh, the person who do the the questionnaire is uh, have simple like friendship maybe sometimes they don't they don't do it for us 
So it might be low response rate. And another one is cell selecting bias. So maybe the researchers just choose their friend. So maybe the information that they get maybe uh, not blend. Because like uh, example, they do the research in one area, like inspiring area. But most of the information that uh, he get from his friend who just live in Sweden for two years and then move to live Phnom Penh and then they send a questionnaire to them and then to get the answer. So maybe the, the information or the data that they, they, they get from maybe not balanced. And another one is lack of opportunity to clarify the issue. Yeah, this one also. Maybe we just give them the list of the questionnaire and uh, as we, uh, as they are a researcher, they don't have time to explain what happened, what happened about their topic, about the questionnaire. So sometimes the respondent, uh, they, they are not clear about the question. So they, they might give the, the answer or the information not clear enough. And another one is about no spontaneous uh, response for email. Yeah, for this one also. <laughs> sometimes they respond, sometimes they, no, uh, they are not. Another one is the response to the question may be influenced by the response to other question. Another one is about the possible to uh, consult other. Yeah. So sometimes they not answer by themselves. Maybe they ask the other friend uh, or the other people to help them to answer because we just send them through the social media, through the email or what else. So they just get the other idea and then answer it for us. And another one is about information cannot be supplemented. Okay. So this is all the thing about the advantages and uh, disadvantages of questionnaire. Okay, let's move to the next point. So the next point is about the uh, form of um, question. So in the research, we focus on two. We have uh, open end question and close question. So in short, we can say open question. Uh, it refer to uh, the answer and not given. And close question. So the answer are given. So like we can see uh, in the picture here, like in open end question, they just uh, ask, what is your current age? How would you describe your current uh, mus muscle status? Uh, what is your average annual income? What is your opinion? Uh, the quality of a good administrator. So the respondent need to write down the answer by by their own word. So the researcher no need to keep them answer. So it just get the idea from the respondent. But for the close uh, end question, close ended question, uh, we have the question for respondent to choose. So it might be easy, very easy for them. So they just read uh, and follow the uh, instruction of the questionnaire and then they can answer it by their own. So there are only two here. Uh, we, uh, we have open and deep question and uh, close ended question. And here uh, the, the advantages and disadvantages of uh, open and question. 
So the advantage is that uh, they provide in-depth information. So maybe a uh, very long or a lot information through uh, one answer or one question or two questions. Another one is uh, a respondent can express themselves freely. Yeah. So what, whatever they want to, to say, they want to express, they want to show, yeah, they freely do it. And another one, uh, eliminate uh, investigator bias. So the answer that we get may be not biased because it coming from the respondent idea. And about the disadvantages of uh, open end question, uh, it is difficult to analyze the data. Yeah, this is the most difficult thing. If the researcher use open-ended question to, to collect the data. So they need to make sure that they are good at analyze the data. They know how to separate it. They know how to group it. Yeah. And respondent cannot express themselves. Yeah, sometimes it's hard for them to express. Sometimes they don't know how to answer. They just leave it playing, or sometimes they just write the question back. And another one, a uh, great chance of investigator bias. Okay. Sometimes uh, uh, here, uh, it, we can say like when they analyze the data or they collect uh, the information, sometimes they, uh, the, research, uh, the, the, the researcher add the information for those who, who are not give the, the full answer of the question. That's why they said a uh, great chance of the uh, investigator by us. And about the close uh, ended questionnaire. The advantage is, uh, is that the uh, only necessary information is obtained. Yeah. So they, they only do it for the, the, the necessary, uh, ne necessary point or necessary information that they want to get. And easy to analyze the time. And respondent find it easy to answer the question. Yeah, for this one is uh, easy for the respondent. And about the disadvantages, um, it lack of depth, uh, lack of in depth and worry information. So the respondent cannot give uh, the an uh, the answer uh, of their own ID or their own word. And they cannot get very information because they already set up the, uh, the answer for the respondent to choose. And another one is about a possible investigator bias. And the last one is the answer given may not truly reflect the respondent opinion. Yep, sometimes mm, the, the answer that is set up. Uh, it 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 not uh, uh, reflect with uh, something that the the respondent want to give you the answer. Okay, so this is about the close uh, ended question. Okay, let's move to the next. Um, the next is about uh, consideration in formulating question. So in here, uh, we use um, a simple and everyday English, uh, everyday language, sorry. So when we formulate a question, when we make a question, uh, we better use the simple word and every, everyday uh, language because not all the respondents are uh, 
understand about what we want to 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 ask or sometimes they it hard for them to uh, give you the answer if we we use the hard word or the 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 technical word in in question and do not use ambiguity um ambiguous uh, question like uh, in the example is your work uh, make uh, difficult about uh, you uh, up, uh, difficult because you are expecting a baby so in this one uh, we can say uh like uh the, the word uh, ambiguous uh, ambiguous uh, question uh, it mean that uh, is one that uh, contain more than one meaning and that can be uh, interpreted uh, differently by the different respondent so if we use that word in the sentence so it, it might be uh, make the respondent give you uh, various uh, answer because sometimes they, they they know uh, simple meaning and another respondent maybe they know the difficult meaning so they might give you different uh, answer or information in one question and another one is about uh, do not ask a uh, double barrel question like how often and how much time so this is the the double uh, barrel question so when we uh, formulating the question uh, we should consider about these three points so the first is about use simple and everyday language uh, do not use the ambiguous question and do not ask the double barrel question. And another one. Uh, do not ask a leading question. So like uh, unemployment is increasing. Uh, increasing, isn't it? And another one like uh, smoking is bad, isn't it? So this is about the leading question. And one more is uh, do not ask questions that are based on uh, presumption. Like how many cigarettes do you smoke in a day? What uh, contracts of two uh, do you use? So this is about the, the base based on a uh, presumption like a young gay talk explaining how some new the young accent the multi took moon dung okay and let me move to the last point the last point is about the secondary data So as we know, we in data we have two. We have primary data and secondary data. So for primary data, it's about uh, something like uh, the information that we go to get by ourselves. Like we do uh, like like we do the questionnaire like we do the investigation, like we do the observation. So this is about the primary data because we go to do it by our own. And for the secondary data, it's about uh, like document about uh, like here, uh, like about the government or semi-government publication, about earlier research, about the personal record, about the mass media. So this is uh, about the secondary data, like something that uh, already uh, published or they, they already uh, made it. 
but for the primary data is uh, something that uh, we, we just do by our own or like the first self. And another one. Another one is about um, problem with choosing uh, secondary data. So this one we have uh, four point is about validity and uh, reliability. So if you know about uh, these two, so some document maybe uh, not validity or maybe not uh, reliability like uh, if it goes through the Google Scholar, if we, if we done uh, set up the year or the time of uh, what they are uh, rise on their document. So it, it, it might be uh, validity or maybe reliable for us in doing our research. Because maybe it's out of date or maybe no updating. And another one is about uh, personal bias. So maybe uh, the use of the information personal, uh, like personal diary, the newspaper, the magazine, or something like this. And another one is about uh, availability of the data. So maybe uh, it is a common or the beginning of the researcher to assume that the required data will be uh, available uh, but uh, this one uh, maybe we, we cannot or we, we should not make uh, the assumption and the last one is about uh, the format so this one is about uh, deciding to use the data from the secondary uh, it is equally uh, important to uh, ascertain that the data is available in uh, required format. For example, uh, you might need to uh, analyze egg in the category of 23, 33, 40, uh, 34, or 84. And uh, in our source, egg may be uh, categorized as 21, 24, or 25, or 29. So this one is not much uh, with, with each other. That's why uh, it became the problem of uh, using the secondary data. So this is, uh, that's all for me, literature. And if anyone have any question, uh, we can ask. And we are waiting to answer the question. If I cannot answer well, I will ask the lecturer to help. Okay, so thank you very much for group number two or pair number two here. Yeah. Okay, that uh, doing presentation about selecting a method of data collection here. Yeah, it's really important for your research report or research uh, study here, right? Okay, so the rest of the class, if you have questions, please ask them. As I have learned that they have uh, gone through most of the important part in here. Yeah, if, if you still have some part that that or you want to discuss or add more, it's fine. You're welcome, right? Okay, so the floor is yours, everyone. Just come up with your question. Just, just unmute and then speak it out, it's fine. No need to uh, be more protocol here. <laughs>
Okay, where, where you got from me clearly? Yeah, teacher, I hear your voice, teacher. Okay, good, thank you. Okay, so are there any questions? Okay, we still have only two people okay, beside the pair presentation here. <laughs> Okay, anything to discuss, Mr. Mesa or Mr. Chandet? Teacher, Mesa and teacher, Chandet, are you with us? Could you please? I'm here, teacher. Okay. <laughs> I just uh, run, uh, running here. Okay. So do you have any uh, doubt, any question about this point? Please let us know. Feel free to ask us if you have any problem. It's so quiet here. <laughs> okay, how about Mr. Jandet? Are you okay or too busy now? Okay, uh, since it's just quiet here, I just want to ask the group presentation a few questions. Maybe one or two, right? <laughs> okay, so yeah, after you have done the presentation, so how confident that you uh, think you can uh, choose uh, a, a, a good method or a great method for your data collection in your future study here? So how much, how much percentage that you think you are, uh, you, you are confident enough for uh, selecting or choosing the, the good or even great uh, method for your data collection? Teacher, for, for me, I think I have uh, 85%. <laughs> yeah. I just think the secondary sorted <laughs> chair. Yeah. Why? Why do you want to use the secondary source rather than the primary source? Because um, it helps us um, to save the, the time chair, especially it helps us. Um, in financial support teacher because um, this one it it need a less more financial teacher. Okay, thank you. <laughs> how about Mr. Rina? So uh, how many percentage that you are confident and uh, which data collection method that you will select it here? I uh, will uh, we'll select for your study. For me, it's, uh, it's around 20 to 80. And for, for me, I think um, it can be both. Maybe it can be uh, using a primary source or secondary source. It, it depends on uh, the topic. So maybe some topic uh, we cannot use the uh, all the secondary data to to uh, to uh, to to collect the the information for the the topic. So maybe we need to do both. Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay, so yeah, you may see about advantages and disadvantages there. Yeah, sometimes maybe you need to use both. Yeah, since uh, if you use only the uh, secondary data source, then uh, you may use the other one, the, the other type of research that we call like a research synthesis, right? Like uh, you just synthesize from the document that you have read so far, and then to uh, draw, to synthesize it, and then draw a conclusion. Like uh, you are not going to uh, use the interview, the questionnaire, uh, even uh, observation, but then uh, you just go and review the literature. Yeah, and then you can uh, synthesize into the finding yeah, and draw the conclusion. Yeah, normally we can say like uh, uh, those uh, study uh, normally popular for the one who just want to uh, like uh, conduct a research in like a uh, international relation, they like uh, some uh, information that they cannot go and collect data from abroad. For, for example, like uh, they want to study about the uh, uh, 
relationship between American and, and China, for example. <laughs> so they, they may not be able to go and interview or even collect data directly, but they, they may conduct a study, a research study by collecting the document, existing document. And then they can synthesize those findings, those uh, mentioned in that part, and then they can uh, synthesize them and draw a conclusion uh, to be their, their finding there, all right? But uh, we can say, need more document. We can say, need to review more, okay? And uh, also need uh, the other critical thinking skill and synthesize skill there that uh, you can uh, do it properly. Yeah, and I need more articles to read and review, right? You can see really uh, a big number of that part. But uh, yeah, somehow that uh, you can use it like, like uh, yeah, both of them, even uh, secondary data uh, sources or, or uh, even the uh, primary data there. Yeah, like normal study, like uh, you just need to review, some literature review, and you also... Uh, uh, select sample, go and conduct the observation, or even uh, questionnaire, or interview them here. This one that we can say like, uh, you're going to use both. Yeah, like <clears throat> normally you need uh, secondary sources for your chapter two, like a literature study, uh, sorry, a uh, literature review, right? Yeah, and uh, the other part that you, you want to collect from the sample or the respondent there, they like what you have present so far, like, yeah, uh, observation, interview, questionnaire, all those things that uh, you need to include in your chapter three, and the finding will be appear and show in chapter, chapter four as well. They can say the same thing, but uh, need more. And uh, later on, you can say, you also need a chapter five about uh, discussion. Yeah? You, you, you will uh, get your primary data to discuss with the secondary data that you have reviewed in chapter two so far. So uh, no, normally we can say like uh, the uh, secondary research or, or the normal research here, we can say there are about five or six chapters, it depends. But uh, for research synthesis, like uh, if uh, which data decide to use only the uh, secondary data sources, then uh, you have to do only only four chapter, for example, right? Only four chapter the part that uh, just uh, use one part about about uh, finding, but we can say like uh, it just uh, just uh, discussing. At the same time, you can see like a synthesize chapter there that you need to synthesize and then start to uh, analyze for the finding directly there. Okay, so something there we can see, but most of them they just have pros and cons. We can see pros and cons as well. Okay, like uh, what you have review here, even uh, you just use uh, interview, it also has its pros and its cons. And, uh, even you use a uh, questionnaire, it also has it advantages and disadvantages. Uh, and advantages, the same thing, yeah, we can say, right? Okay, so see those things and you may experience from that part. So how can, uh, how can you do with that one? So you will have some uh, benefit or, or foundation or basic knowledge for selecting a method of data collection in your study in here. So yeah, this, this chapter is really important and thank you for your uh, precise and insightful uh, slide presentation that you have included with uh, all of the uh, information, concrete information for researcher or yeah, it's really about the, uh, uh, the one who just learn how to do research here. They can see this one and then they can decide. Here, whether which uh, tool or which method of data collection that they can apply in their study in here. Okay, that's it from my side. And uh, the rest, any other question or any doubt you want to ask or clarify before we we move on? Okay, or we can see like uh, we may break about 15 minutes and then we will be back.
and uh, we will move with me. I still work for you one more chapter because it's like you still uh, need one more uh, the other chapter for next week. Yeah, about chapter seven, you can see. So this week I will work on chapter six about uh, constructing a hypothesis there. Okay, so any question, any further clarification? <laughs> Mr. Mesa and Mr. Chandet, especially. Quiet. <laughs> okay, so yeah, it's quiet, I mean, I mean it's okay to me. <laughs> So, okay, uh, we can take a 15 minute break in case you want a toilet or even a cup of tea or coffee. We'll yeah, see you at uh, 3.50, right? Okay. okay. Thank you for this part and we will meet each other again at uh, 3.50 with the uh, research, uh, constructing a research hypothesis in uh, your study here. Right? Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, thank, thank you. you. Yeah, enjoy your break. Breaking time here. Yeah. <laughs>